Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have got a colorful, rainbowy, butterfly card project that I'm really excited to share with you because I've got this color combo for a rainbow that I am loving and it features a really cool background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. So let's take a look at the products. The star of this card is the Outline Butterflies. It's this beautiful 6x6 six six deeply etched red rubber background stamp. And I love the pattern. I love the overlapping. I think there's a ton of things you could do with this. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to be using one of my dies, the U Da Best, for the sentiment today. Super simple. And for the ink colors, I've got Dusty Rose, Sweet Mango, Sweet Corn, Jelly Bean Green and Sea Glass, all from Gina K Designs, along with Versamark. It's a great rainbow. Ultra Fine Embossing Powder from Brutus Monroe in Alabaster. A few sequins, some purple tape, and I've got a Nouveau glue pen that I'll be using today. And one of my life-changing brushes from Picket Fence Studios. That's, that's a critical piece. For cardstock, I'm going to be using just some Nina Solar White Classic Crest. Uh, along with a little tiny scrap of Lawn Fawn sticky note because it is the perfect color that I was looking for. I'll be stamping with my Misty. Very important to have this, at least for me today. The stamping tool is very helpful. So let's get started. First, you have to take the foam pad out of your Misty because this is a cling stamp. These rubber stamps that are cushion mounted are thicker. So you just place it right in the stamp positioner, just like that. And then my cardstock is directly over the top and I'm going to make a tape handle. Well, it's a tape handle and it's also just to hold it in place and adhere it to the misty door. Put the tape on and then close the lid and just pick that up nicely with the lid and it, the purple tape won't leave any marks and it works pretty well. So using my embossing magic all over, I'm going to take off the static and then I'm going to just ink it up. I'm probably inking it a lot more than I'm showing here uh, on the video, but I'm only doing it once. And then comes the gentle but firm pressing all over. The sleeve over the hand, mm, it does help, I'm not gonna lie. And sometimes you may want to come in with what I like to call the double palm, a truly magical technique if there was one. All right, I've got my embossing powder and I'll just sprinkle it on and now you can start to see where where once there appeared to be nothing, now there are lovely butterflies showing up and I'm holding on to the piece with the tape handle, which allows me to quickly just rotate it around. A tape handle's just, I, I think it's kind of fun. Okay, there it is, beautiful. And then you just work your way around and make sure everything is melted. It takes some time, but just go slow and steady till it's all shiny and melted. That looks good. Next, I'm creating a little template using one of my A2 layers dies from Waffle Flower Crafts. The reason I'm doing this, it is the, it's the four and a quarter by five and a half die, the largest one. The reason why, I want to visualize the full card size. And the reason I want to do this is I want to make sure that my rainbow is complete. Sometimes when I start out with a six by six paper, I blend towards that size, if that makes sense, and then I end up, when I go to cut my panel, losing some of the detail on either end of the rainbow. So I thought if I had just this little template in place, knowing that I am gonna be cutting a panel that is actually smaller than this, I know I'm coming in a little bit, but this is gonna help me lay down my ink. Now, this is your basic emboss resist, right? I'm going over each area with one of these Gina K Designs dye inks and then using a paper towel to come back in and wipe off any excess ink. But this color palette is fantastic. I used it for another card project recently and I will link to that in one of the information cards above. But these colors blend so beautifully together from one color to the next. And the other thing is you don't even need to clean your brush off in between. You just kind of rub it off on the paper, the little scrap paper to the side and proceed. And I think the results are so nice. And when it dries, it's just, well, I don't want to quote my friend, Laura Basson, but it's like butter. Thank you. I think that's really pretty. All right, panel done. Now, speaking of those dies, I, I take the third size in. I'm not sure what the measurement is, but I can list that below as well. 
tape this down and just run that through my die cut machine to have this beautiful panel. Now here comes the math. I want to cut this diagonally. I want to split this panel apart so I had to kind of hold my pencil and then flip because I, at math, not my strong suit, but all I'm doing is adding a line, which I realized after the fact I didn't really need to do that because I'm just going to cut from point to point. All right, cut that in half so you're splitting it apart. Then it's time to take a little bit off each one of these. Is that a trap triangle? I don't know what it is, but I'm lining it up on my paper trimmer with the grid and then moving it over about a half a grid space and making sure the top and bottom points are hanging off roughly the same amount and cutting. It's not perfect, but I think it achieves, oh, I almost bent that one. It achieves what I'm trying to do, which is just create a little gap between the two pieces. Now I'll just cover them all with Gina K Designs Foam Squares. And I'll do that off camera because, you know. Next, cutting out both the shadow layer and then I will cut out three of the U the best. And that is, I believe, the Nina Solar White 110 pound weight. Now, usually I use spray glue for this gluing of die cuts together, but I ran out. Well, I, I actually completely botched my bottle in an unfortunate spray incident. So I'm just using the liquid adhesive from uh, Tonic, and this stuff works great. Layer it together, put a brick on top. Repeat that process for three layers, and then I will also add the glue to the back of the stacked dies and place them on the shadow layer just like that. And again, Take my acrylic block and just place it on top so it's completely adhered and nice and together. Card base, I'm going to score it at five and a half. This is the Nina Solar White Classic Crest, 110 pound. Folding that down and giving it a nice press. It's the most beautiful cardstock. I love it. And I will tape it closed because I need my cards to be flat, especially on this project because I need to see straight down. I took all of the backers off the foam tape, brought my little ruler in just to kind of help me because I this is a harder thing for me to do, but got it lined up so the top and bottom margins are roughly equal to that center margin. I'm popping up the sentiment as well, the you the best, with a couple foam squares at the top and the bottom, and then I'm gonna pop that right down in the center. And the thing that I love about this is that center where the cut happened was where the yellow was. So that's why I chose the sticky note color and I think it works perfectly. I'm finishing this off with just a few sequins to add a little bit of shine to my project. And I just use my tweezers now and the Tim Holtz craft pick as opposed to a dedicated sequin tool. I'm having better luck that way. But that's the finished project. I really love how this turned out. I think Gina's ink colors are gorgeous and that background stamp has so much potential. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel. Also, check out all the new releases from Simon Says Stamp, and I will see you back here with another card project soon.